This is Ultimate General Civil War, the Battle of Antietam on Legendary Difficulty. And in this battle, we're going to take 46,000 men and face 59,000, and we're going to get almost 6 to 1. And I'm really surprised that uh, I get 45,000, almost 46,000 kills out of this. So absolutely a great time and a lot of fun. So I'm showing you that I buy all of the guns, and I have been buying all of the guns all of the time. Now here for the Cav, I end up selling the uh, 1861 Enfield and the 62 CS Richmond. I think that's a mistake. I think I should have kept those weapons and um, because I end up using them. I end up building a lot of Cav and I end up uh, experimenting with a lot of the good weapons that are here in previous games. I just used the Sharps 59 because it fires fast. But um, I like the weapons that hit harder and are more accurate. So selling those was a mistake. Here, pretty much it's Sharps and JF Browns. And that's pretty much what you get. I think about experimenting with the Colt 55, but I never quite get around to it. Uh, the Colt 55 would be just for a short range skirmisher unit and Pretty much all of my uh, sniper units are snipers. So anyway, um, I'm showing you that uh, I had some ballast and I got rid of those. And I, uh, I'm not going to show you how I built the army. Basically, I just pumped all the good guns um, into the army. Um, four in medicine, nine in army organization, so that... Uh, I can get my uh, seventh unit, which will be the Iron Brigade, into First Division. So to do that, you have to have your entire core completely filled out. If there's a slot in Fourth Division, the Iron Brigade will drop there. Now the downside of that is the AI always picks the crappiest units to come into the battle. So my two really good sniper units in Fourth Division are not going to show up, but the uh, two crappy units are going to show up. So um, yeah. Third core, only first two divisions I have coming in because they come in across the bridge. So, yeah, in the previous battle, the enemy got a mixture of well-experienced and green troops. Here are the numbers, and 63 to 68 training, which is the big number. And interestingly, um, uh, one of the reasons that I only have 20 units, you can only bring 20 units in your first three cores. Um, so putting more than that, doesn't help you. Um, so I can bring 24 units, but you should only bring 20, except for first core, if, if you're doing what I'm doing here, uh, because this is the only way to get seven units in first division. So the enemy is very aggressive, should not be a surprise. I would like to take a few more shots on his cav. His cav units are very large. Of course, everything's three-star, training level of, you know, to the sky. But that's okay. Um, I'm bringing a lot of cav, too. Let's see, how many cav am I bringing? I'm bringing 2,400 cav. So there's a lot of cav in this battle. And I want to experiment with cav more than I ever have in the past, and I'm really having a good time with it. Uh, cav has really good spotting ability if you perk spotting. Uh, better than snipers with two perks, and it, it just, the dismounted uh, rifle cav is very, very powerful, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm not having as much luck with melee cav, but uh, I'm having a lot of success with the rifle cav, particularly giving them good weapons that fire, that are accurate, and dismounting them, which pretty much doubles the damage, so... The, um, so one of the reasons, let's see, the enemy is bringing, um, 1,188 cav to the battle. No, I'm sorry, he's bringing, how many? 1,900, and I'm bringing 2,400 cav, and he's going to lose 1,100 of that. So, yeah, he has, um, 241 guns, I have 203, a lot of artillery in this battle, so... 
But my guns, I have 20 pound parrots and 24 pound howitzers. There's a 24 pound howitzer. And uh, they're going to be felt. Unfortunately, when you are fighting against the enemy on legendary, a 24 pound howitzer doesn't make the enemy just run away like it does on other levels of difficulty, as you're about to see. So the thing I'd say about this battle is up until this point, I'm trying to figure out, because you're experiencing this with me. I'm just playing the battles on Legendary, trying to figure Legendary out. This is my first time playing Legendary. And I'm trying to figure out how to play on Legendary and be successful. And I don't get everything right. Um, I have to adjust my style of play. So I figure out a lot at Antietam. And I think Antietam is probably the point where I get it, where, where I understand legendary. I understand legendary with training level as high as it is in this game, and I have a good idea of what I need to do to be successful. And part of it is, as you will see, um, the effect that my artillery does not have on his infantry in the woods which we're about, to, uh, we're about to experience. So, yeah, when he's in cover, he can just stand there all day and take 24-pound howitzers to the face, and he doesn't. He just shrugs it off. So, but through this battle, uh, I get it, you know, and then the battles after this have a certain feel to them that are different, and I have a slightly different approach to the enemy. And I would say one of the things that I've noticed is on every other le level of difficulty, I get to Antietam and, you know, I, I love the Battle of Antietam, but I get to Antietam and pretty much I could restart another campaign. In every other campaign, you know, over a thousand hours of playing this game, um, the most fun part is up to Antietam. On Legendary, that's not the case. I'm about to play um, Chancellorsville, and I'm pumped about playing Chancellorsville. Uh, Chancellorsville is a fun battle, but it's it's just uh, killing baby seals with a club, man. It's just on every other level of difficulty, including Major General, it's just kind of, eh, I'm going to go and kill them all, and it's not that interesting. But I'm really pumped about playing Chancellorsville on legendary and i've built a large army a lot of units um i like the equipment that my army has and i'm really looking forward to fighting this battle and seeing how many i can kill it, it's i'm not actually playing anymore for you know to get a high kill ratio which is kind of like the challenge that I set for myself in other campaigns. On Legendary, it becomes about just killing as many of them as possible. And the number of casualties I take is important, but not as important as driving up the number of enemy killed to keep his training level and, uh, well, and as you'll see, his equipment level also starts to skyrocket in a couple of battles. Here's what I've noticed about that. There are random events that happen, and I have a theory why these things happen, But and I'll give you that in a moment. But there are random events that happen that drive up um, his numbers. It's either he gets a lot of troops, and that drives up his manpower pool. He gets trainers, and if you, you read the after-action report, sometimes he just gets trainers. And that can drive up training level 10 points. And what happens in this campaign is he gets a shipment of good weapons. And that drives up his armory number more than 10 points. A, a single shipment of good weapons. And that's what the After Action Report says. We, we're sending you a shipment. So if, if the After Action Report says we're sending you trainers, training level is just going to climb. Like 10 points. And if he gets a shipment of good weapons, training uh, armory is just going to climb more than 10 points. 
I think the reason this happens is the game adjusts to whatever is, uh, however you're playing. And if you're just killing an awful lot of the enemy and driving his numbers down, he'll respond by driving the numbers up to make the game more challenging. Um, so it's kind of like the better you do, there seems to be a, maybe a penalty uh, for doing too well. So, I don't know. Um, I thought it was really weird that training just kept climbing, and I thought it was really weird that he just got this huge shipment of uh, weapons. So, anyway, the first part of the battle is just going splendidly. Um, I wanted to take just the north part of the woods, roll my artillery up and hit him. Um, he, my guys are in the woods. My artillery is in pretty good position. And... Yeah, just uh, just keep pounding on him. Uh, he keeps trying to dislodge my guys in the woods here, but I have three units on his flank that are just going to um, make him pay. Every time he steps in the o open, I'm going to hurt him. I like the fact, I mean, at, you saw my army, um, about 1,500. In, in what I'm doing, it's kind of a sliding scale, so... The 1st Division troops are larger than 2nd Division, larger than 3rd Division, and so on. So, um, the enemy seems to have averaged this, or averaged these numbers, and I'm looking at his numbers are very reasonable. You know, none of his units are 3,000 men. His units are all, like, normal size, what I would call normal size. Completely playable. His cav units are oversized because he gets a fixed number of cav units, fixed number of artillery. And if you scale up and build a whole bunch of cav, he can't spawn more cav units and more artillery. He has a fixed number of every type of unit, and then they fill up based on scaling. So, yeah, when I brought in a lot of cav, and I am, I'm bringing in a lot of cav, that doesn't make him build more cav units, it just makes his cav units bigger. So that makes perfect sense. I am just loving this. Man, just, you know, big line of uh, infantry and artillery, roll the artillery up. Catch him in the open. Now I knew he had reinforcements coming in here, and of course he's very, very aggressive. I have my reinforcements coming in. Uh, I don't really want to fight him toe-to-toe -to -toe in the open. His units are happily about 1,200 or 1,300. And we're just going to take up a good position and just hit him in the open. So his unit there routes. That's good. Down to 900. Yeah, everything's going really well. His artillery is... Uh, he brought a lot of artillery to this battle, so... I'm having my artillery target his, but he's in the woods, so he's going to be hard to kill. I was trying to get some cheap shots on his artillery. He's down to under 300 now with that artillery. Yeah, slowly just wrapping around his position and... Yeah, it's all going really well. More artillery is coming up. The James. James is such a good weapon. Um, the thing about Legendary is the enemy just hits hard. My troops uh, in 1st Division are taking some losses. Um, yeah. We have uh, 300 kills and 160 lost. So that kind of hurts. This unit is down to about a thousand. One next to it is down to about a thousand. So, of course, that's not counting the detached skirmisher, but still. So, his artillery started about what, five or six hundred, and now it's down to uh, under two hundred, so that's going well. You just have to be patient. 
I he charges into my infantry. Uh, I didn't hit fall back fast enough. So now we have to get that guy out of melee, out of, you know, out of danger. Okay, so we win the combat. Um, in melee, I think it's interesting that detached skirmishers count as a unit, so you get a, you know, as long as you have two units against one, you get a buff. And, uh, yeah. His uh, two units on the left um, are going to get flanked by my infantry in the woods to the south. So he, he's going to lose that. Uh, he has a, an artillery unit in the open that I'd like to be able to get a shot on. While I really don't want to fight the enemy in the open, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, any direction he goes in, I seem to be able to get a flank shot on him. And if that's the case, then he's just going to he's just gonna break. His artillery in the woods down to 70-something and gone. So that's cool. Now I have to target another artillery unit. Find another artillery, kill another artillery. Yeah, he keeps attacking on the left, and I keep getting easy flank shots, and now I'm getting shots on his uh, little artillery unit. Um, but the fight in the North Woods is getting... Is that the North Woods? Uh, the woods uh, north of Dunker Church. I don't think that's called... That, that's not the North Woods. Um, anyway, the fight in the woods is really bloody because he has good cover. And my units there are taking a lot of losses. Well, they're getting down in size. So, yeah. But I'm not... I have no intention of pushing any kind of an attack there until I can get my reinforcements to come around to the right flank. Uh, I just want to hold this line until I can get... Um, I have two sharps units coming around the corner. Um, you can see them in the north. Uh, my infantry has come in um, in the in kind of the center and my left. In fact, I, they're almost, they're running into each other. And yeah, I just want to form a big circle around his forces here. And if he just wants to stand there and fight, that's terrific. Because I'm going to win that, especially when my artillery comes up and I have a lot of artillery. And then my calf comes up, and it's just going to be a really good time. So, yeah, actually, I, uh, on the left, he's getting hit uh, three units to one, and he's also getting hit in the flank. So that's all working out just perfectly. I've been building this army with pretty much uh, raw recruits. The army that I'm taking into Chancellorsville, I think I bought three veterans um, going into Chancellorsville, filling out the army. It's a really big army, but it's all raw recruits, and I just keep replacing my losses with raw recruits. So mostly one-star units fighting against his three-star units, and yeah, it, and it works. It, it just, it's okay. Yeah, pretty much the idea is no matter where he goes, uh, there's a unit that can hit him in the flank. So he has a unit of 700 that's charging on the left side. I'm going to hit him 2 to 1, which is what I, which is what you have to do on Legendary. You have to hit him 2 to 1 uh, consistently. 
and yeah, I'm going to let the guy uh, in the center just go ahead and get in melee now. Uh, if he wants to get in melee, his units have been hit pretty hard. We'll go ahead and do that. So, yeah, the unit that uh, marched up that was 700 is now 580. So, And the more he comes out in the open and gets hit 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 and takes flank shots, uh, the more broken his army is going to be. Just keep degrading him. And uh, now my cav is up, and this is what I've been waiting for. He's charging with 400 men, and he's gone. So, yeah, that's terrific. So look at all that cav coming in. One, two, three, four, five, six cav units. Um, that's what we've been looking for. Six cav units to come in on the enemy flank. And all my artillery is now... I think my artillery is pretty much up, isn't it? Uh, look at all that artillery that came in on my left. Just absolutely terrific. Snipers and detached skirmishers will advance and take shots on his exposed flank. And he has artillery over there just uh, waiting to get hit. I'm moving up my 24-pound howitzers. Really not pushing to take Dunker Church. That's not really important. Um, I would like to take it so that I can form a defensive line in the woods and catch him in the open. But that, that's a nice killing pocket that I have. Uh, I really don't want to attack Sunken Road. But um, what I want is I want him to charge exactly where he's charging, which is into that open area just to the right of Dunker Church. That's, that's just a wonderful killing zone. And his artillery is sitting in the open taking lots of unnecessary casualties. Okay, he's charging with a unit that should break. He's getting he's gonna get hit three to one. And his unit should break. I'm gonna go ahead and melee him two to one since he has no supporting fire. And his numbers should you know fall very, very rapidly. Yeah, he came in at, I think about thirteen hundred, and he's gonna go back probably about a thousand. Look at this guy screaming in. This guy's 700 screaming in on the right. That's terrific. You have to stay uh, alert to these guys, though. I mean, they're so fast. You take your eye off the map for a second, and they can... They're faster than Cav. So he's in melee, but I have three units and several artillery firing into that melee. Uh, he's going to get his head taken off. Look at that. He's down to 400. He'll be lucky if he survives. Yeah, he's going to take some more volley. He's down to 300. Yeah, and in the center, his poor little artillery unit's certainly going to die. Yeah, his melee charges into that force because they're all supported by a wall of infantry and artillery. They're just suicidal. So I have the unit that was in melee fall back and let fresh units step forward. And they're all delivering volleys. Artillery is just pounding on him in all directions. How many cav do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cav, two snipers, several infantry on his left flank. Yeah, that's just, that's just a really good time. Yeah, I don't want to drive him off the sunken road. And you'll notice I'm not even advancing onto the Dunker Church. I'm hoping that he'll come up and try to take the Dunker Church or hold it. Um, that would be ideal. Because if he advances to the Dunker Church, he'll take all kinds of fire uh, on his right flank. And I wasn't paying attention to my sniper, and he, and he got my sniper into melee. So, uh, I'm pretty angry about that, so I'm going to pound that guy, that infantry unit. I'm going to punish him for that. But we need to get out of there because I don't want to take a whole bunch of artillery. So, I have to be more careful. If, if you're 
um, going to use snipers and cav, you have to hit pause frequently. There's no way around it. These units will just get killed. Um, he'll charge your snipers, of course, if he sees them, he'll charge them. Uh, he'll charge your cav. Um, his units are really, really fast. And, yeah, you just... It's impossible to stay on top of 75 units and his 75 units and everything that's going on. So you have to hit pause frequently and really keep an eye on all of your support troops. Your infantry is fine. And even if he gets into melee with your infantry, that's not the end of the world. But it's keeping track of your auxiliary troops. And if you're going to play on legendary and you want to get a good result, you have to use... Um, snipers and cav. Another thing I've noticed about cav is if you put a perk in spotting, your cav, my cav, has the high to, highest spotting numbers. So for finding the enemy, for being able to see the enemy artillery to take it out with your long range guns, there's nothing better than a cav unit. Typically, what we do with cav is we fight with it. But I'm starting to really think about getting that second perk in a unit and then not fighting with it, but you, having it stay hidden on the flank or the rear of the enemy position and just spot um, artillery, not attack enemy artillery, but just find it uh, so my long-range guns can kill it. Uh, being able to see the enemy is actually more important than to be able to hit the enemy with either snipers or cav, if that makes sense. Because Union artillery, Union long-range artillery in these grand battles is so powerful, um, it's going to kill anything it sees. So the whole trick is just to be able to see high-value targets. And the units that help you do that the most are CAV units with, two, with spotting ability, and then after that, snipers with spotting ability. Okay, and here's uh, on the other side of the bridge... Um, not interested in the victory location at Burnside Bridge, just interested in the um, crossing point to the north. I think I put my Whitworths over there because of their incredible range. So, we have tons of time. There's no reason to be in a hurry. I want him to just put everybody forward into this little pocket that I've created for him and let my infantry and artillery just shoot at him until there's nothing left to shoot at. The goal is to kill them all. So this um, cav and sniper force, their job is to first of all kill all the artillery in Sharpsburg and that's because that artillery will be on my flank. So if I kill it, then it's not on my flank anymore. And look at his units vaporize. Yeah, my, um, this happens sometimes where you tell an artillery unit to fire at something, but instead of giving it the fire order, you misclick and hit the ground and then he'll move forward. Or I told him to shoot at something far away. And so he's moving forward to get a shot, even if that means charging right into infantry. So yeah, a 10 pound parrot unit just <laughs> charged forward and got hit and I saw it at the last second. Good news is a bunch of his units charged forward to get it and got vaporized so so the job of this cav is to kill this artillery and it's doing a splendid job of killing this artillery. I'm moving some infantry down to my right, near where the cav is. And we're just uh, stretching the uh, enemy flank, giving him something else to worry about, something else for us to shoot at. And we just took out a whole bunch of his artillery. So, mission accomplished, we can get out of there.
So yeah, even though his unit is a three-star unit, he's charging three of my units. Uh, they're all one-star units. And um, all three of them firing into this guy or they're going to kill him. He just keeps charging one unit at a time. And his units are just going to be vaporized one unit at a time. I can always get into melee with him two on one, which is a guaranteed win. And yeah. Yeah, his central unit uh, in the center charged up. He's being hit by three or four infantry units and a whole bunch of artillery. So if he attacks, he's dead. If he defends, he's dead. Now the enemy's weakened enough, I can go across the bridge. If you go across the bridge while the enemy is strong, he's going to counterattack and uh, probably defeat you because probably third core in everybody's army is going to be very weak. Crappy weapons, uh, very little experience, and uh, probably smaller units. So my... My third core is, uh, I think, 42s. 1842s. Not very strong, not good weapons. But they're basically just a blocking force. So there's no hurry. We just have to get them across the river, form up, and then advance with artillery support, and then we'll have just what, six, seven thousand more infantry and a whole bunch more artillery on the flank of the enemy, just adding to the chaos of the enemy position. And I'm completely on the flank of the enemy at, when I bring those units across the bridge. So, yeah, his units are getting smaller and smaller. I see a whole bunch of them are two and three hundred in size. Some of them are just uh, vaporizing. I'm actually looking for artillery to target, but uh, other than that one unit of 149, I don't see a whole bunch of artillery. Now yeah, my last uh, Whitworth is in position, and... Um, there's an artillery for me to fire at. It looks like about 340 men. So. Let's go ahead and get everybody moving forward. It's interesting. My cav, my cav is uh, fiddling with his cav in the south, which is great. I'd like to take his cav out. Now I see he has some artillery to the south. Oh, that's terrific. He's uh, charging into the water, so I'm going to catch him in the water. Also a big opportunity for my artillery to get some kills, but even these 42s, and these 42s are good at short range, and I can see his unit in the water is already breaking. Um, he was firing not in volleys, but just individual fire, so he was doomed. Yeah, I hope he just stays there. Yeah, just taking shots on his artillery, pestering him, killing his calf in the south. I have one, two, three, four artillery units firing at his one infantry. And now two infantry with 42s firing into him at close range. Now three infantry. So these 42s are doing a really good job. All they have to do is get kills. That's all they have to do. Doesn't really matter how many they lose. Just get up close to the enemy, exchange shots, let the artillery do its work.
now I want the enemy to charge back into this little kill pocket. That would be nice. Yep, and as you can see, I've given the order for all of the artillery in the world to move up. Yeah, I'm kind of leaving uh, a big space for the enemy to move back to the victory location. So I'm hoping to tempt him into moving north. But I don't think my artillery is going to... Um, with all that artillery up there, I don't think he's going to have it. Yeah, everywhere he advances now, my artillery's up. Everywhere he advances, he's going to suffer. I actually ordered units to charge, but he shattered, so it didn't matter. Yeah, it looks like he's not interested in charging back up toward the uh, victory location, so let's just put up a wall of infantry. And we're in no hurry at all. Just keep firing at this guy and keep blasting away. Still getting flank shots on him. Yeah, so keep making sure that it's two units on one, every possible chance. Yep, and that artillery is gone. Yeah, keep my Whitworths firing at his uh, at his artillery. That's the job of the Whitworth. The Whitworths are good, particularly in these long battles. You just target an artillery and just let them fire until it's dead. And they'll just keep firing no matter where it goes and kill it eventually. Yeah, now it's time to start moving um, moving units south. Need to get, um, what I'm doing is I'm, I wanna take first, I wanna take units by division and move them into Sharpsburg because he's gonna get a bunch of reinforcements. And um, as everybody knows, you can't take the last victory location at the bridge or the battle ends. And I think he has maybe 10,000 Maybe, maybe, I, I don't know, it might be more than 10,000. Reinforcements come in if you don't take Burnside Bridge, and I want to kill all of those too. So there's a limit of how far we can go, no matter what we do, because uh, we can't take the bridge until after his reinforcements come in. So, or at least I don't want to. I want to kill them all. Yeah, look how slow his units are moving now. They have really just been bled. And now they're moving really slow. That's a very good sign. Yeah, I'm slowly repositioning my army. The... Um, Ballast units that I have near Dunker Church, their job is just hold the church because um, the enemy will try to sneak somebody around to steal the victory location. 
interestingly enough, they're moving forward and uh, just, I guess, building up condition. Got them their first star. And what happens before Chancellorsville is I give these units a general. I mean, they come in several battles and just walk around and take a few shots or whatever they do in grand battles. And uh, they end up with a star. And then I put a general in the unit and I, and I can boost them up to, I don't know, 1,200 men. Uh, and they keep their star. So those units become full infantry units by Chancellorsville. And I give them, I think I give them either Tyler's yeah, I think they get Tylers. Uh, they might get... No, I give them Enfields. I think... Yeah, I give them Enfields. So they end up with... They end up full-size units with uh, their first perk and Enfields. So they go from being uh, on guard duty to being fully functional infantry units. So very cool. As I'm looking at this, one of the things that I could do a little better is uh, I've moved my supply wagons, but I don't have my... I, there was a period of time I didn't have my officers in the right place. Uh, the officers should always be buffing morale. Uh, there's a morale recovery buff. Not that uh, I mean, I'm seeing everybody has good morale, but uh, your officer needs to be buffing morale all the time. Uh, Spectrum mentioned this in something that um, in a comment that um, you would expect the union units to route with the damage they're taking well th the way to counter that and sometimes they're just going to route i mean there's nothing you can do they're just going to take too much damage too fast but the the only thing you can do to really counter that is one keep them in cover and secondly keep the officer nearby and if the officer's nearby they're going to recover morale really fast in most cases, they will recover morale fast enough that they won't rout. And if you don't have the officer nearby, uh, there's going to be trouble. Uh, you're going to have problems. Your units are going to rout far more frequently. So I got into the habit early on. I'm not doing it particularly well right this moment, but I got into the habit early. Well, and part of it is because, is uh, you know, the enemy is the one need to be concerned about morale right now, not me. My units are doing just fine. But um, one of the things is uh, keep the officer nearby. That was very cool. Just have my um, rifle cab just kind of do a... Uh, like a machine gun. <laughs> one unit fires, then the next, then the next, then the next, and just chop the enemy to pieces. And the, the units I'm advancing with, um, on my left, th those guys are all pretty low units. Uh, I want them to get XP. I want them to take losses because those losses are basically free. Uh, one thing I would do differently, or I am going to do differently in my next campaign. In fact, I changed direction at, um, I, I, well, certainly by Chancellorsville, is I start selling all the Lorenzes. Um, I like the Lorenz. Uh, but in my next playthrough, I'm going to buy all the Lorenzes I can in the early game and then go to maybe Enfields or something like that mid-game. But uh, yeah, just the Lorenzes are a fine weapon. 
particularly for the early game. And uh, I, I sell a lot of Tylers to buy Harper's Fairies. I'm not going to do that next time. I'm just going to keep the... Uh, I'm going to keep the Tyler Texases. I'm going to keep the uh, uh, the good weapons the enemy gives me. I'm not going to sell them to buy better weapons because um, the Tylers in the hands of a one-star unit are just fine. Uh, Enfields are a good weapon, it, There's and the enemy's going to give you a bunch of Enfields. And at some point, you're going to get a bunch of CS Richmonds. Uh, great weapons. Uh, the only weapon I think that I'm going to sell is I'm, I'm gonna well i'm gonna sell um anything worse than a lorenz but i'm gonna sell fayettevilles because they're just worth so much money that uh you know you can sell a bunch of fayettevilles and then buy piles of 61s so but other than that um yeah i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy infields i'm gonna buy um good mid-level Weapons for my one-star units, uh, Lorenz and better, and the game's going to give me a whole bunch of those, so yeah, I have a different buying strategy for next game. Dismounted calf having a very good day. Yeah, what I'm trying to avoid is I'm, I really want to try to avoid taking the victory location at the stone bridge. Yeah, a lot of the dismounted calf here has um, just crappy 55s, and they do they do okay. Uh, in the south, we're just going to run this guy down. This is one of the cool things about calf. You catch, um, I've really started to enjoy that. You catch individual infantry unit, well, anything, individual enemy units, isolated and alone, and your calf just beats it up. I mean, you can charge it, you can charge the enemy, you can just dismount and shoot him to death. I mean, he has no chance. Uh, so these infantry units that retreat in weird directions are just dead. So yeah, that was a unit over a thousand in the south, and my I have four cav units, and they're they're just tearing him up. So yeah, that's just nothing but a good time. So I want to spot the enemy, but I can't. T I don't want to take the flag. I want to make sure I get them all. Okay, tons of time. We're just going to roll up um, 24 pound howitzers and long range guns and just blast heck out of this guy. Tear him to pieces. So there are two infantry there. Send a detached skirmisher up to get visibility on this guy. Yep, all we need is visibility.
And here's another uh, infantry unit and two supply units um, for my cav to pick on. This is going to be fun. So we captured two supply units, and that infantry unit is basically dead. And another infantry unit, um, two infantry units surrendered. So he has one unit of 600 left. And I already sent like an entire division to go chase this guy down if he gets away. But uh, now we're in a bit of a race because we only have 16 minutes to go. So if I want to capture this guy, my cab is probably going to have to do it. Thirteen minutes. Yeah, I, I want to capture this guy. And we kill him. So he shatters. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, after medicine, um, yeah, I lose 7,800. Uh, we kill almost 46,000, about six to one. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm really thrilled that, to take out 46,000 of the enemy. That's going to have a huge effect on his army, on his manpower pool. And it was just a really fun battle. Um, I really enjoyed this battle. I, I, you know, it's one of my favorite battles of the campaign. And yeah, notice how his artillery was the biggest killer on the battlefield for his army. And my units all did really well. Um, the six-pound rifle is uh, dollar for dollar one of the best weapons you can buy. It's just really effective see one dead officer the rest of them seem to have done really well he gave me a bunch of tylers um that's good i'll take that i gave me some did he give me harper's fairies no i recovered some but he didn't give me any so and notice how the iron brigade pops into first division that was the whole goal and always 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 save so I'm going to pop a couple of officers in the, um, the spots here where I lost officers. Um, yeah, 1280, 12,800, well-experienced, and a whole bunch of green. And training is now 65 to 70. So we were at 63 to 68. Training went up. So... There you go. Training just keeps going up. It's on its way to the sky. Got a lot of experience. A lot of units got a perk. Yeah, the army is in good shape. We have lots of money, which you have to spend before Stones River. You have to spend all the money before Stones River. You don't want to go in with any cash on hand uh, at Stones River, or you lose money. So. Uh, I'm going to show you that as we get up to the battle. We're going to buy all the guns. And uh, yeah, the, the quality of the army just keeps going up. I keep building units. I build a crazy number of units, and I start making them bigger and bigger. And I'm having nothing but a great time playing on Legendary. This is a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you um, in the next battle. Here I've replaced some officers, and you can see a whole bunch of two-star units. Yeah looks great. And I'll see you next time.